Well, uh, first of all, the biggest trends of uh, IoT in 2018 are really uh, the fact that uh, the explosion of connected devices is continuing. Uh, more and more new devices are making their way uh, into people's homes, into people's uh, workplace, uh, into companies, and they're creating, uh, as usual, a huge attack surface for organizations. These are devices that no one has any control over, no one even sees in the first place. Uh, these devices are network connected, they're internet connected, uh, they have an abundance of wireless connectivity around them, and so they create uh, the perfect entry point uh, into organizations. Uh, so accordingly, we've seen many new attacks uh, hit these devices uh, and hit organizations at large, and the damage to these organizations is getting uh, bigger and bigger. So the state of security uh, for IoT devices and how manufacturers are treating them is uh, really hasn't changed a whole lot. I think there's uh, more uh, visibility into the problems. Uh, basically, people are aware of the fact that their devices have weak security. They're aware of the fact that uh, these devices can be used against them and against other people. But uh, to say that manufacturers have started taking this uh, more seriously, uh, not so much. I think at the end of the day, a minority of devices uh, have auto updates. Uh, most devices still run very, very old software. I think up until the time uh, consumers are basically demanding from manufacturers uh, to have more secure devices, manufacturers really have no incentive uh, to put out devices that are more secure. So I think uh, the change, uh, when it comes, and it's probably um, kind of a long way from us uh, still, will come from uh, two directions. One is regulation, uh, basically uh, regulation catching up to the pace in which technology is putting us at risk. Uh, but the other is just uh, uh, basically the consumers themselves. I mean, uh, think about uh, an analogy to cars. Uh, at the end of the day, cars didn't start out having uh, seat belts in them. They didn't start out having airbags or things like that. Uh, these days, no one buys a car without a five-star security rating. This is something consumers really care about. Before they did, there was no incentive for manufacturers to really make cars secure. It's the same with IoT. I think at the end, uh, what we'll be seeing is security ratings and uh, people who will care about that. The more attacks are prevalent, the more they get hit or understand the risks themselves. Well, first of all, um, a lot of the security practices uh, that are common with uh, normal kind of IT, best practices we've had for 30 years seem to have gone out the window when it comes to IoT devices. Uh, default passwords, um, open ports, not locking down uh, or randomizing anything. Um, a, lot of the, a lot of the basic things aren't really covered in IoT. But the way I think uh, it will manifest eventually uh, in, in devices, today we see it most uh, as a means to an end. Uh, people take over IoT devices so that they can attack someone else. Uh, they do massive DDoS attacks. Uh, they use IoT to spread malware around inside networks. But increasingly, uh, we will start waking up to, uh, to a future where uh, you wake up in the morning and your refrigerator is uh, ransomware. Someone is uh, asking you for $20 to get your fridge back. Uh, if it's done right and done at scale, uh, what you'll start seeing is that uh, people will constantly have this dilemma of, uh, will I just pay $20 or will I go and do something about it? Up until the time that starts happening, it's unlikely uh, in, in, from where I'm sitting uh, that manufacturers will do anything different. Absolutely. I think... Uh, as we progress and as IoT uh, kind of takes root in both homes as well as enterprises, uh, privacy, uh, data, all these things are things that are at risk. I mean, when you're thinking of it from a home perspective, uh, 
these devices know a lot about you. But I would say, and I keep kind of looking at it from this way, uh, financial incentive is really uh, what this is all about. Uh, most cyber criminals are after money. It's plain and simple. So while data privacy of people at homes is uh, important and interesting, I would say that uh, the organizations that stand to uh, uh, to have the most problems with this are in fact uh, corporations, are in fact enterprises. Uh, they have a massive footprint of IoT devices and it's growing every year. Uh, they're, they're a target rich environment. Uh, there's a lot of data that you can make a lot of money off of, uh, and we're seeing this happening uh, more and more. I mean, uh, anything from uh, uh, fish tank uh, sensors that are used to compromise casinos uh, to uh, devices sitting within enterprise environments like digital microscopes uh, that are running old versions of Windows and entire manufacturing floors uh, get taken out by something like WannaCry, uh, where the digital microscope is patient zero. I think enterprises stand much more to lose, and there's a lot more financial gain in compromising them through these devices than individuals at this point. Well, first of all, Let's talk about uh, a few challenges enterprises face when they're uh, actually trying to secure their environments from all these new devices. The number one um, control mechanism that enterprises put in place is they use antivirus, they use endpoint security. This is inapplicable to most of these devices. You can't really put what's called agents uh, on these types of devices. So you have to take a different approach, a radically different approach, in fact. Uh, you have to be able to secure your network and these devices completely externally to them without using any agents at all. Now, uh, that also ties uh, pretty well with the fact that more, more organizations are uh, adopting a zero trust approach. Uh, basically, no device can be trusted, no user can be trusted, everything needs to be constantly monitored. So I would say where we see most organizations are at this point, uh, from our perspective, it starts with visibility. Uh, discovering every asset, every device that you have. You would think that in 2018, uh, this would be a solved problem for enterprises, but it's far, far from being solved. So discovering every asset, understanding every device that they have, the full context around them, followed by a complete risk and threat analysis, uh, being able to figure out if devices are doing what they're supposed to be doing, if they're part of botnets, if they're compromised, if they're exfiltrating data. All of these things are things that enterprises have a hard time these days uh, understanding uh, and being able to control. Well, the trend uh, in, in Black Hat this year, uh, the trend continues of uh, hacking pretty much every IoT device out there. I think uh, there needs to be a list maintained right now of devices that haven't been hacked uh, by anything. Uh, this trend continues, and for good reason. This is the easiest entry point into anywhere these days. Uh, these are devices that have been kind of... Uh, left behind from a security standpoint. We all know this. Uh, but that trend still continues because it's still a hot topic. Uh, still we're seeing um, um, new wireless uh, hacks, new uh, Wi-Fi vulnerabilities, new ways to exploit uh, devices and networks in ways we've never seen before. Um, DNS rebinding just a few weeks ago made its own wave uh, and, and our research kind of piled into that as well around uh, just how vulnerable IoT devices leave enterprises. Uh, and this trend seems to not go down but go up from year to year. Uh, so definitely looking forward to both uh, some of the new revelations at Black Hat as well as DEF CON right after it. Uh, there's a lot to, uh, a lot to see.